blockchain has introduced an entirely new set of possibilities across society use cases are abundant and diverse ranging from charity to food labor to the media to utilities while blockchain technology is still in the infancy phase of its life cycle the range of companies and industries working to bring it to maturity may surprise you i'm smriti executive content editor for blockchain magazine and today in our block interview series we have bill claxton founder and operation director of next id bill it is an absolute pleasure to have you here today thank you very much smriti uh you're very welcome so to begin with if we could start i would like to get a little information on what the next id is and why it is an important asset to the blockchain ecosystem so next id is a company that's focused on producing verifiable digital certificates and these certificates follow an international standard which is known as verifiable credentials and this allows individuals who receive these credentials to prove that they have attained certain capabilities or certain academic proficiency or whatsoever it can be skills based or it can be academic achievement based but actually verifiable credentials is potentially very broad you could use these same types of certificates for medical application for employment history for um things like certifying the authenticity of artworks uh financial documents such as credit reports so next id is set up as a company providing services to issuers so these would be organizations that want to issue certificates and they use our service online to produce these verifiable digital certificates So uh with such you know uh, why data of students how do you function like what is your process So the issuer could be a school or a hospital and they use our application to uh import data from their own systems it could be as simple as an excel file uh or there could be a back end integration with their uh records keeping and then in batch they can produce certificates so for example let's say a school is teaching blockchain education and they have a batch of 50 students who have graduated from a particular course they can load this data for 50 students in and then they can produce the certificates anchor them to blockchain and produce notification which goes out to the 50 recipients your fifth recipients receive an email with a link that they can click and they can see their certificate to them it looks like something like a pdf uh but actually underneath is encrypted data and this data is actually the verifiable credential and if they want to share this information with relying parties like graduate schools or employers they can send them this credential and it can be independently verified on sites which are run all over the world well that seems like an efficient process but uh, while we are talking about it would you like to throw some light on the use of blockchain in the education sector so there are many different things that you can do with blockchain uh, in education but certificate seems to be one of the uh, low hanging fruit that um, people are interested in firstly essentially what we're doing is a kind of a notarization So we're not heavily relying on the blockchain we're not transacting in crypto or uh doing other things we're simply creating a smart contract on the blockchain and this smart contract holds a record of all the certificates that are issued by a certain school and also the revocations if they're being revoked so what goes onto the blockchain is transactional information it's not anyone's personal information So we call this as a trust anchor. So what happens is you produce the certificate, you store it somewhere, and you create an anchor on the blockchain. And so the blockchain is just storing transactional information really. Uh and it's similar to a notarization application. Uh so this is this is what we're doing. Uh other people may be doing other different things, but 
Um, there's quite a few people around the world who've adopted verifiable credentials as a standard for the data that they're producing. And it, almost all of them are using some blockchain as a trust anchor because it makes these certificates immutable. They can't be changed. So you know exactly who the issuer is, who is the recipient, what are the claims that are being made, and it can't be tempered with at all. Uh, so do you feel, is there any drawback of blockchain? Um, you know, I don't think there are blockchain specific to notarization or anchoring certificates, but um, storage space is always at a premium with blockchain. Mm. So some people are producing these certificates on the Bitcoin blockchain, and there there's very little space for this data. So they're using the opcode space in Bitcoin and making a reference there to some central storage where the rest of the information is contained. So that's not a very good use. With Ethereum and other more modern blockchains, you have smart contracts. So you have more storage capacity. You can create a record over time. You can add to it. You can um, put in revocations for previously existing certs and things like that. Uh, so it's much better suited to use a smart contract capable blockchain. Um, the other thing I would say about the choice of blockchains is that you want to make sure that the certificates last forever. If you produce a diploma and give it to somebody, you have to assure that it's going to be there for a long time. And even if your business doesn't sustain as long as the university sustains, the certificate should still be there for the user, right? So let's say we, we're an application vendor. We provide a solution for a university. The university presumably will stay there for a long time. They may stop using our service, but the certificates are sitting out on the blockchain have to last forever. So you wouldn't want to choose a blockchain which is like flavor of the day or something like that. You would want to choose a blockchain which is going to have a good community of support for many different applications, not only certificates. Got it. So, uh, you know, blockchain is getting adopted by Fortune 500 companies. Do you think it will make a huge impact on the global economy in the next five years with different industries adopting blockchain? Absolutely. For example, just to look at the certificates, uh, you know, space, we now see certificates for so many use cases. We describe this as the... Um, Cambrian explosion of use cases for certificates. There are certificates for people who are, you know, airline hostesses or, you know, they need certification to uh, handle emergencies in flight. There are certifications for people doing ship faring and they operate cranes on boats and things like that. And all of these are interesting use cases, but the problem today is that different vendors are producing different certs. And so what we're looking towards is a standardization for the methods of verification. And once this exists, then you can see like Anderson Consulting or other uh, consulting company or big HR company putting verification services on their websites. And then these verification services would be able to support our certificates, other people's certificates, you know, whichever different standards are being supported, they will list out. And then anybody can come along and verify their certificates on such services. At such point in time, employers can create two lines. So they can say, here's a green lane for all of the people who have verifiable credentials and everybody else go into the red lane where you turn. So this will have a huge transformation on the way HR is done. And inside the organization, there can be a stack of these verifiable credentials for existing employees of the firm. And the HR department will be able to locate verifiable, verifiable skills within the organization. So they can say, if I have a new project, I can assign it to somebody who has this particular skill and know that they're verified for that skill. So just certificates and verification is going to be a huge change and it will underlie a lot of changes. You know, we, we look at identity 
and it's kind of horizontal underneath all these vertical applications. And today identity is kind of broken into three big segments. You have like centralized identity like governments, Aadhaar, usage, uh, corporate usage, they're all going to be heavily biometrics. Then you have like social identity, which is like Facebook and Google and OAuth, where you sign in and use the credential to manage your passwords and get access to services. But they keep tabs on you. You're paying with your identity. And the third area is decentralized identity, which is what we're talking about with certificates and wallets. And we see this as something that's going to explode. So there'll be this whole horizontal layer supporting new applications that are identity based. Got it. So, uh, you know, while we're talking about it, what is your opinion on Bitcoin? Do you feel it is a safe investment having no intrinsic value? Uh, I've been a Bitcoin investor for years. Uh, I put a lot of faith into the adoption around uh, Bitcoin. Uh, adoption is also very strong for Ethereum, so you can make a comparison there whether the developer community is going to favor Ethereum over uh, Bitcoin. But there are different types of investment, and Bitcoin is certainly an on-ramp for everybody who's wanting to use crypto. So no matter which exchange you sign up with, you typically get some Bitcoin just to get started. And being able to then start uh, investing in other cryptos by converting your Bitcoin to whichever uh, token or coin you want. And so I see it as kind of the gateway for most new people to come in. And also it's, the, you know, it's never failed for 10 years. Uh, it's got a you know it's got a halo of trust around it, which no other blockchains just don't have, and that's why the sophisticated investor community has been pouring money into Bitcoin in the last couple of years, and uh, so I feel that it is a good safe investment. Uh, lastly, one piece of advice you would like to give to our viewers? Ah, uh, that's a hard one. Um, <laughs> I, hmm. <laughs> I generally uh, end up in discussions uh, or around decentralization with the conclusion that today's applications are not really fully decentralized. Yeah. For example, issuance is not going to be decentralized because a university is protecting its reputation, and they're gonna make sure that they control the issuance. Um, a lot of applications are still kind of anchored to some kind of centralized uh, mechanisms. And I don't think you should be pedantic about decentralization. I don't think one should approach these problems and say, everything has to be fully decentralized, otherwise it's not interesting. I think one should be open-minded and look at decentralization. For example, the ability of users to carry wallets with many certificates inside, mm -hmm. share them selectively. That's a decentralization of the use of these certificates. But the issuance of certificates is still centralized. What um, I think this brings to every use case is a more rational, rational, I should say, um, uh, discussion about the merits of a project and don't get hung up on there's some part of it that's still centralized. Look at the part that's decentralized and see that that part is working. Got it. So uh, I think, yeah, that is that is it for now. Uh, our, as of now, we are running out of time. Bill, but sounds super interesting, especially with all these large companies trying to create an impact with the help of blockchain. We all are looking for a revolutionary shift. It was great having you here. Thank you for your time, Bill. Thank you so much, Smriti. Thank you. Look forward to speaking with you again. Same here. Dear viewers, stay tuned to for next blockchain interview with Blockchain Magazine. This is Smriti signing off for today. Have a great day ahead.